So I have the pleasure of, of welcoming everyone. Uh, and it is great to see so many in attendance this afternoon. Um, so my name is Liv Ingeborg Lied, and I am the director of the Research Center MF Kosser, which is the host of today's event. Uh, it is indeed a great pleasure and an honor for us to host this book talk with Professor Val Halak, focusing on his new book, Reforming Modernity, Ethics and the New Human in the Philosophy of Abdurrahman Taha. Uh, I am very excited to welcome Professor Halak, as well as Professors Islam Daye and Samuel Dagestani, to our online academic space here this afternoon. So I'll give the floor now to Dr. Al Dagestani, who will present the speakers and the topic and also chair the session. Dr. Al Dagestani is a research scholar at the Middle East Institute at Columbia University, an associate faculty member of the Brooklyn Institute for Social Research and a postdoctoral fellow in Islamic Studies at MF Norwegian School of Theology, Religion and Society here in Oslo. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Leith, uh, for your introduction, also for hosting us. Um, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining the event. Uh, we are very happy to have Professor Halak and Professor Islam Daye with us, both of whom I will introduce in a, in a moment. Before doing so, please allow me to say a few words about the Critical Islamic Studies, uh, or CIS, research group and collective. We launched the CIS initiative in 2021 at the MF Norwegian School of Theology, Religion and Society. And in spite of or because of the pandemic that has been really ranging around the globe, we have been fortunate to hear and access many voices via Zoom and more so to work towards making critical scholarship more accessible and publicly available. Now, our aim at CIS is to foster research and discussion in Islamic intellectual history, ethics and law more broadly speaking, and more specifically on Islamic environmental and economic thought. This platform is meant to expand and deepen both historical and modern research in these areas, touching upon themes and texts that deal with intellectual history, post-colonial studies, and critical theory. We also encourage critical and informed engagement often with Western Orientalist scholarship on Islamic studies. Now, we are extremely honored to have Professor Wael Halak as our first guest speaker for the CIS uh, lecture series. Professor Halak really needs no introduction, but for those of you who are coming from different scholarly backgrounds, that is other than Islamic or Middle East studies, he is the Avalon Foundation Professor in the Humanities at Columbia University, where he has been teaching ethics, law, and political thought since 2009. His teaching and research have dealt with the problematic epistemic ruptures generated by the onset of modernity and the socio-political historical forces subsumed by it, and also with intellectual history of Orientalism and the repercussions of Orientalist paradigms in later scholarship, as well as with Islamic legal studies as a whole. He's the author of, a, of over 80 scholarly articles, numerous books, including most recently The Impossible State, Restating on Orientalism, Sharia, Theory, Practice Transformations, An Introduction to Islamic Law, and of course, reforming modernity, which is the topic of today's webinar. Uh, I may add that I have personally benefited greatly from Professor Halak's scholarship and also from his supervision. And also given the structural themes that, that uh, on which at CIS we try to focus on, I could not think of a more befitting scholar to help us launch uh, our lecture series. Our respondent today is Islam Daye who is an assistant professor of Arabic philology and Islamic intellectual history at the Freie Universität Berlin. He held visiting professorship positions at the Luxembourg School of Religion and Society, at the American University in Cairo, and at the University of Turin. Islam has published widely on Arabic philology and Quranic studies, including exegesis as literary criticism, studies in Quranic interpretation and rhetorical theory, Najam al-Din al-Tufi, Halal al-Qad fi Bayan al-Hakam al mutaqid a noted edition, and Purity and Order, Islamic legal controversies in the wake of Shabbatai Sui Messianic movement in early modern Yemen, which is forthcoming in 2021. We are very happy to have you both as, as, our, uh, as our guests. Uh, Professor Halak will speak for about 30, 35 minutes. Um, thereafter, we will offer some questions to him from the panel. And then we'll take some questions from the audience as well. For those of you who are watching or listening, 
If you would like to contribute a question, please write it in the Q&A section. So not in the chat, but the Q&A. And we will take note of that. Um, please, Professor Halak, uh, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, I am very happy to be joining you today uh, um, and uh, um, look forward to the discussion after my short talk. Um, I'm not sure I will uh, reach 35 minutes, but I will do my best. Um, well, um, let, let me um, let me kind of take a slightly different swing on things um, today because I've talked about this book a couple of times before I have to, for the public, not to mention all sorts of interviews. And so today, what I would like to do is to add uh, um, kind of another dimension to the discussion in the book, um, which would also take uh, into account uh, the, the basic ideas there. So it is, it, I'm, I'm not talking about something totally new, but I'm trying to situate the, uh, the, what I have done in the book in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a yet another kind of context, um, which is, I would call kind of microscopic, uh, more of a kind of, uh, um, a grand scheme of things rather than focus on details, which of course befits uh, a, you know, a public discussion more than, uh, more than details that can, can, can alienate some uh, listeners. Uh, now, what, uh, what I uh, would say is that um, the, the study of, uh, of, of, of Taha is, a, or should be um, quite, um, should take into consideration an important fact, which is that he cannot really be studied um, without the context of Jabiri, the, the, the figure that loomed behind his, the, the shadow that loomed behind his, his back, so to speak, for almost all of his uh, career until fairly recently. Um, the, the, these two people work, worked in the same institution. Uh, Jabiri was the towering figure, the, the, the more aggressive one in terms of style, and also in terms of, of publication and the force of his uh, discourse. Uh, and so uh, he had uh, some sort of, uh, I would say, dominance in the, uh, in, in, in the University of Rabat, where in fact uh, Taha was uh, for a long time um, in many ways, if not beleaguered, cornered. And, uh, and, and so the Taha's work evolved in many ways as a response to, to, to Jabari. Uh, and, but this is not a, a I don't see this um, as, a, as an incidental or as a specific occurrence that is individual and, and, and kind of uh, personal or that is, not, that is not how I see the relationship between the two. Actually, the two seem to me to, uh, in the way they expressed their ideas and, and took account of each other, because Jabiri was taking account of also the, the voices that Taha would have kind of expressed or Taha or the likes of Taha would have expressed in the backstage of his thinking. They, 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 they of course, they, uh, they appear in, uh, in his discussion of Sufism, meaning Jabari's discussion of Sufism. And it, the discussion is a little impersonal there, uh, but, but, but people like Taha are found in this discussion. They are in the back of Jabari's mind when, 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 when he was writing, uh, especially in the Moroccan scene where Sufism is, is, is quite uh, vibrant. And, uh, and so the way I see the dialectic between the two, is as the, in this case, as both the microscope and the macroscope of what is happening both in the, in the Muslim world over the past century, almost exactly past century, century, and maybe, you know, a decade, uh, and what has been happening in the enlightenment and especially in, 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 the, uh, um, in the mushrooming of critical voices uh, in the last uh, 50, 60 years within, modern, within Western modernity. Okay. So to put it in a different way, uh, Jabiri, from Jabiri to Taha, that, that spectrum that goes through their works from beginning to end, beginning with Jabiri and ending with Taha, can be seen as a, a representation of the dynamics and internal struggles and the internal questioning of the Arab Islamic revival movement 
in terms of this intellectual history that started with 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 Abdu most most and more poignantly in many ways with, with Rashid Rida uh, and until it reached uh, uh, us in the beginning of the 21st century. Uh, Jabiri is representing um, the, I might say now, the archaic liberal voice within the, um, within the, the, the Islamic, uh, Arab Islamic reformist movement. Uh, and, and, and Taha is, uh, is in fact not pulling him back into the good Sufi old tradition as much as representing to Jabiri what uh, people such as uh, the, the, the recent philosophers or not so recent philosophers, but the, 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 the philosophers that have been counting much in the critique of modernity from within the Western hemisphere such as, for example, we can, we can, we can begin with even Kierkegaard, but we can go to to, to, uh, to uh, uh, Levinas, for example, and the Frankfurt School, uh, I, I would say uh, 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 Foucault and Ado, uh, Pierre Ado, uh, all these figures represent, in fact, uh, very much an, uh, analogies to Taha in the, in, the, in the Muslim world, or rather Taha would be an analogy to them because they, they, he is actually capitalizing on their work. Uh, uh, Jabiri is representing the mainstream liberal tradition that is still banking on a form of rationality, which if we were to uh, translate carefully in, 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 in Jabiri, it would end up to be quite a bit an, a form of instrumentalist rationality, which precisely what Taha has been fighting just exactly the way the Frankfurt School from, 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 from whether it is, you know, the, the classical work of, of uh, uh, Horkheimer and Adorno and, 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 and later on, although I'm not sure the later, later, latest Frankfurt School representation is, is uh, uh, part of my story, but definitely the early Frankfurt School. Um, and of course, uh, the silent uh, voices that don't appear quite, uh, quite clearly in Taha's work, such as in the, the, the work of Pierre Adot and, uh, and Foucault, and, 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 the, and the latter did draw heavily on the former, right? And so in, in that sense, and of course I should not, should not forget to, to, to uh, bring in here uh, the more recent voices such as uh, Charles Taylor and uh, McIntyre, who are in fact doing all of these names that are, are doing various, uh, various works, so to speak, that have been engulfed and contained in Taha's project. So Taha is, 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 in, in, is putting together for the Muslim world and on behalf of the Muslim world, the, the, the entire range of these critiques that I would say that he is doing what Levinas did in the, in the, for, the, for the Jewish tradition. He is doing what the early Frankfurt School and the, the critiques of instrumentalist reason and what Foucault and the, the technologies of the self or the esquisist idea, all of these things are put in one mold in Tahas. This is where, uh, where, where his project um, can be seen as a quite a forceful, forceful one because he has managed to pull together in a fairly cohesive, highly systematic and consistent uh, uh, um, um, uh, frame or, 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 or framework, uh, a, a, the, 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 the entirety of, of these voices. Um, and so uh, I would say that, that um, Taha's work is as much postmodernist and, and, and uh, uh, in line with all these names I have uh, mentioned, as it is really a harking back to a Sufi tradition. It is not to say that he didn't. It's not to say that the Islamic tradition and the Torah, so to speak, uh, which is a, a very new word in itself, in, in a word that has its own ideological and, and, uh, uh, and the intellectual bagage. It is not something that we can always assume to be historical. But, but the, 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 my point, I think, is, is, is clear in the sense that that he, he draws on this Torah, bringing, bringing to his discussion 
a, um, the, some of the most uh, uh, fundamental features of the Sufi ways of thinking, whether it's about reason or about praxis, which I, I translate amal as not practice, but as praxis because it has a particular meaning. Uh, in, in, in practice can be anything. Praxis is a, is a particular technology of conducting mind and body in a way as to, 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 to make discourse and act harmonious. And that is not something that is uh, just Sufi. Uh, the, this is where the, 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 the beauty of, uh, of Foucault's work build, building himself, uh, basing himself on the remarkable uh, uh, career of Pierre Adot is that we know that these technologies of the self uh, have started from the most ancient of times. And the more I get interested in this, uh, in this uh, uh, um, field uh, of research, I realize in fact that this the, the Greeks even, the most ancient of Greeks, were in fact drawing in, on an earlier tradition that, that, that was, it seems so far, this is at least my hypothesis, hypothesis uh, has, has, has drawn on the Egyptian Phoenician heritage. So which reminds us a little bit that we, we really need to revisit, revisiting, visiting, revisiting Black Athena which always is, is something that haunts my historical imagination when it comes to intellectual history. Uh, I am referring here to Martyr Bernal's controversy. Uh, and so, and so uh, uh, it, what, 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 uh, what uh, Taha is doing is in fact asking uh, pretty much the same questions that Foucault asked on behalf of Kant first, and later um, uh, channeling, channeling uh, out the importance vis-a-vis uh, -vis Kant, the importance of what Pierre Adot uh, has done in his, in his work, which is to ask what, what, what are we missing to, to today? You know, Kant asked a question about his own time and Foucault is insisting on, with Kant, along with Kant to, to ask what is wrong, what is going, what has gone wrong today? What is the, what, who are we today? And in order to answer this question, uh, Foucault, with all of his, from the very beginning of his career, but obviously the, 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 uh, his, the force of his ideas became more and more manifest as he went along, but the, the ideas were already there in, uh, in some embryonic form from the beginning, even when he was working on, on, on health and hospitals and police, et cetera, and surveillance, these, these are, were, were an integral part of a long-term research that led at the end really to the last four or five years in the Collège de France, where he really focused on exactly that the kind of thing I'm talking about now. And that is the, in many ways, uh, the culmination of his career. Uh, I would wonder always what would, what, what would have been the next stage? Like if, we, if he had lived another three, four years, five years, what, what would he have said uh, in terms of taking the, 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 the logical conclusions of all of his work on what he calls uh, often either the care of the self or the techniques of the body or the technologies of the self or uh, the hermeneutics of the subject, which is the title of one of the, of the uh, Collège de France productions. And so uh, uh, what Taha was doing is precisely articulating this critical uh, I'm not saying that, that he was imitating, for, I, I'm saying that Taha actually, with his brilliant uh, and much more innovative and much, much deeper insights than Jabari. Jabari was a, a monumental polymath, no doubt. Jabari was, had the, the ability to take wide sweeps and, and, and literally cite for you in the span of 10 pages, like 30 major works from the Islamic tradition and managed to tease out some of their what I might say, uh, historical imp implications, and then channel it towards his, his argument, which was not, by the way, as I've shown in the book, was not always consistent or even logical. He got himself in trouble on several times, and I don't think that a true critique of Jabari has been yet deployed. If, if, if his work to be the subjected to close scrutiny, I think, I think there, is, there is lots of uh, intellectual bloodbaths that can happen in, 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 uh, in, in that exercise. Uh, there are many problems in his work, uh, but he was able to, with, with sheer quantity, was able to overwhelm the Arab market. And this is where I find th there is a little bit of trickery involved here, 
is that I think he dumped on the Arab market, especially so much material and so from so many sources that people could not could not even digest what he is trying to say and or to 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 take in uh, the amounts of, of 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 historical material that he 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 threw at them. That is not the case with 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 Taha Abdurrahman. Taha does does. Um, a quote and draw on, and you can see if you if you track down his uh, his his uh, uh, let's say individual concepts such as the ruh and such uh, terms that were fundamental for his philosophy, you realize from the way he's he's not he's not t telling you oh uh, this is from and I'm, I'm going to summarize for you Kushairi's risala or uh, you know uh, 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 Saraj's this or that he he he's he's actually speaking his own language but you could see while He's speaking that he is, but very deeply and autonomously on, on these people. He knew basically, I would say he knew the, 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 the most of the chief Sufi masters that, uh, that have pub, that, uh, whose works we have managed to, 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 uh, to edit and read. <coughs> and so the, the uh, so the, the, uh, the involvement, uh, of Taha in the, 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 the current discourse, the contemporary discourse is not one that, that, that replicates, imitates, or just tries to regenerate, reproduce, uh, and, and put in a different form, but uh, adopting the same substance of, of, of the names I have mentioned. In fact, his work uh, rarely draws on any, um, on the substance of any philosopher's idea in in in, in uh, he's always working at in, in a sense with his own tools and navigating his own ship uh he might his ship might touch the ship of 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 a fellow sailor and he might even look inside to see maybe what's happening in the uh, in the in the in, in on the on the on the deck of the other ship but he is he's sailing his own he's having his own ship traveling with it autonomously and this is where He's distinguished from Jabiri, who, 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 with all of his uh, arguments, in fact, is drawing so much on rep reproducing materials from the old sources. Um, so he was in, in, uh, or is more innovative mind than than Jabiri uh, was at any point in his career, uh, and and he, I would say, uh, should be seen as in the company of uh, of the critics that I have mentioned uh, here, but were operating with, with his Islamic tools. Uh, because, the, the, for example, if you, uh, if you look at Foucault, Foucault is hampered by, by quite a bit within the, 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 the Christian tradition. Uh, in his, for example, engagement of what is critique, um, he's, he's almost terrified of the juridification of, uh, of, 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 uh, of ethics, which is what Christianity took so far as to, in fact, alienate Europe from Christianity. That's what turned Europe basically into, into a secular continent. If Christianity was operating in, in, in a way that, that, that was um, much more humane with society, promoting the, the actual social order, uh, it, we wouldn't probably have an enlight enlightenment or, or modernity, that's for sure. Uh, so what, 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 uh, what uh, uh, Taha is, is, is doing, is to draw much more comfortably on the Islamic tradition, invoking its capital, its intellectual capital, uh, in 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 the critique of, and I see him very much doing very much sim similar work, like like for example, Levinas. Uh, in, in so in 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 that sense, um, but but lo let's look at. Uh, I have what another ten minutes, perhaps. I I just want to to uh, to. Uh, um, um, to, to show um, how the two intellectuals concepts of reason um, in fact represent represent the, the the what the current situation in modernity east west everything where you have a mainstream and still fairly um, intellectually innocent audience where many people are still saying, well, you know what? Yeah, we are destroying the environment, but we can fix it. We, we will have the tools. No, no, don't worry about it too much. 
uh, uh, the, the liberalism, okay, fantastic. Uh, capitalism, wonderful. We are living in a good age. We have some problems, but we'll fix them. Well, that is not accepted by, by so many others, even beginning from Nietzsche, obviously. So the, the voices critical of the mainstream in, in, in the modernity have started a long, long, long time ago. I could, I could say even started with, with in the beginning of the 19th century quite significantly with, with whether it is whether it is it is it is uh, Kierkegaard or Jacobi or uh, all sorts of other voices which who actually have some affinity with with the thinker we are to, talking about today. Uh, so if we look at their forms of reason, and now this has been discussed enough on 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 in, in scholarship that that I don't need to to uh, to dwell on it too much. But but uh, uh, we we know that the beginning of the story is with Jabiri himself, who, who came up with one of the landmarks of his projects, which is the, the distinction of, of between three forms of reason, al-aql al-burhani, al-aql al-bayani, and al-aql al-irfani, right? So al-burhani is that uh, basically um, demonstrative reason, which basically, uh, um, he, he, he calls it demonstrative. I mean, this is, again, it's not, <clears throat> an intrinsic historical fact. Uh, people did not call it like this before, before him, for example. And so the naming itself qu does quite a bit in, 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 in recreating the, the image of something. And once you hear Burhani, you think, oh, what's wrong with demonst demonstrative reason? I mean, all of our thinking rests on this demonstrative syllogism that Aristotle told us is actually, you know, uh, inescapable this is the ultimate form of 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 actually mathematical thinking but but what 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 uh, what jabiri hides behind it is 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 the fact that it is it is a uh, it is a particular conception of reason that was seen as uh, in fact insufficient and 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 quite inadequate for the purposes of muslim intellectual endeavors for for centuries and that's why it never caught on because Muslims were thought it is thought it to be actually uh, partial. There is much more in the. This is why, for example, empiricism in Islam arose way before David Hume and the British empiricists even began to think about this. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is one of the ultimate uh, ultimate empiricists, um, living 300, 400 years before before David Hume, and 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 but he managed to put. Uh, what might be called the, the, the syllogistic reasoning, which of course he had lots to say about and he found highly problematic, as we do today. I mean, the big logical uh, critiques today do, 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 go, do very much similar work. Um, uh, uh, so he, he accepts that, but he, like many other jurists, uh, 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 th there is much more that is required in terms of what might, we might call uh, either rhetorical reasoning or more importantly, analogical and, and uh, inductive reasoning. So induction and analogy played a huge part in, in along with the syllogism and other things, uh, formal arguments, um, which, which uh, are much more than the syllogistic argument. When I say formal arguments, I'm talking about a whole set of other arguments. Uh, uh, all of them were used by the Muslim uh, jurists and the uh, theologians and uh, even some uh, mystics, uh, because the mystics were not non-jurists. Many of them were jurists as well, if not if not most of them. And so uh, uh, here is the first distortion: is that is that for Jabiri, um, al bayani becomes like the the demonstrative reason becomes the uh, the, the ultimate form of reason. Uh, and then you have the what he calls bayani, which is really juristic reason. That's the Sharia reason. And of course, he despises the third category, which is al-aql al-irfani, which is the Gnostic or Sufi, basically reason, because it is legendary, it is uh, it's a story, it is uh, uh, mythical, it is uh, fanciful, it is not based in reality, uh, imaginary, it's so and so so forth and so on. <clears throat> now. In many ways, it is not really, we don't need Taha to tell us that this categorization is highly defective for, because of one historical reason. In other, one, in other words, you don't need a philosopher. It doesn't take a philosopher to show 
that these are problematic. It, you need only a historian to actually go back to the sources and, and, and say, well, uh, uh, Jabiri actually misrepresented the three categories, all of them. That in fact, the Aql Burhani is not as Burhani as he, 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 he thought, it's not as complete or perfect as he thought. It, Al Aql Bayani was not as deficient or contaminated by you know, other things, because that's the, the, the problem of Al Bayani, is that Al Bayani, because it is Shari'i, Jabiri didn't want to say, oh, well, you know, it's defective because the Shari'i was bad. So he said it was contaminated by foreign influences. Just as Al Aql Irfani was, which, well, which of course takes the worst lot here, takes the worst condemnation. Al Aql Irfani becomes now suddenly becomes in the at the hands of, 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 of Jabiri, becomes a chauvinistic enterprise, literally. Jabiri condemns literally the, 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 the Persian influence on Arab culture by saying that actually Sufism is not Arab, it is it is it is a Persian intrusion, which came from before Islam. So it becomes literally a matter of Shi'i Sunni debate, which, which is really it's hiding behind such such uh, nationalistic and and other which are not befitting a good historian. Uh, the, the the Sufi experience is not it's true. It is not just Islamic, because the Sufi ex experience is in fact I would say Asian, and when I say Asian. I am not excluding uh, Greece from the picture, not, nor, nor Rome, by the way. Uh, so the, the, uh, again, I come back to the Black Athena debate. I, I am refusing to put uh, Greece and Rome in the realm of Europe. Uh, Greece and Rome became European only in the last three, four centuries, only after the 16th, 17th centuries. And the process begins in the 17th. And so if you look at the intellectual map of the region of the of the Western Mediterranean basin, and what happened east of that, um, going through Syria, Greater Syria, Iraq, Iran, India, um, the the Sufism is just another variety, another variation of a very long tradition that goes back to the pharaohs and the Phoenicians. So it is, the, and we have different names for it, but the Sufi experience in Islam is to some extent, of course, unique in the sense that it is produced within a, an Islamic garb. When we have Al-Insan Al-Kamil and connecting so much of, uh, of the Sufi practices with the, with the, with the prophetic model as a, an ethical exemplary, then we have a, a, a unique phenomenon here. Yet this uniqueness uh, capitalizes on and derives from a long, long uh, Asian tradition of, uh, of um, of, of the same, uh, and, and so so the, um, Jabiri's uh, trio, um, in philosophically speaking, was 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 put on uh, right on its head, was turned right on its head by the work of uh, Taha, where he in fact reverses it, reverses it totally. So Al Aql Al Burhani becomes instrumentalist reason, the, the that which has been condemned. Uh, severely within uh, within 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 Western modernity itself, and again we can begin with the early Frankfurt School for this particular aspect, the condemnation, uh, total fundamental critique of uh, of of, uh, of instrumentalist reason, and then the 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 he, for him of course the second one would be the juristic, uh, but of course it's not sufficient, so he resorts to the ultimate form of reasoning, the most not only the most in his opinion, not only the most uh, convincing, but it's even the most logical. So the, 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 the legendary, uh, imaginative, uh, almost uh, hallucinating form of Sufi rationality in Jabiri is converted into the ultimate form of, of reason, uh, where in fact it, 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 uh, it absorbs certain elements from, from, from Al-Aql al-Bayani of Jabiri, which is for, for uh, Taha is al-aql al-musaddad, but enhances it in such a way as it becomes al-aql al-mu'ayyad, which is an encrusted, solid, uh, um, subjective ethical uh, uh, value uh, in that, 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 in other words, probably for him, that's the ultimate form of humane and human and spiritual and deep form uh, of, of, of reason. 
Um, so if you look at this, again, I come back to my earlier point. If you look at, at this tra trajectory that goes from a condemnation of, uh, of, uh, of uh, I would say, religious spirituality, typical of the secular project of, the, of, of modernity, now being taken and, and, and uh, entirely renovated and restructured and rebuilt by Taha, we reach this trajectory from the mainstream modern project where uh, you, you might say the mainstream academic as well as industrial and business and uh, culture uh, seem to be um, uh, um, lavishing in, 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 uh, in the pleasures and wonders of the modern project when in fact there is a, a minor, minority on somewhere that is a powerful minority that is telling us Listen, we are in trouble and we need to reconsider everything. And I'm talking here about the Western now, Western part of the of the of the of the equation, that we are in trouble and we need to rethink this very seriously before it is too late. And these are the names that I are just simply uh, six or seven or ten out of dozens of names that are, and they are increasing now. And especially in the last few years, I feel that the, the crisis of the environment alone is making people think about other dimensions of the modern project. And this link, the link between, between, between the environment and our intellectual pro projects needs to, be, uh, uh, needs to be excavated much more deeply and widely because, because it, everything is, is interconnected here. Uh, the, the, the very fact that I am, uh, I am being bombarded with, 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 uh, with poisoned food, uh, the air I'm, I'm, I'm breathing is, is poisoned, uh, the water that I'm, that I'm drinking is poisoned. I uh, have to have now white noise. I'm just discovering now because I cannot in New York, I'm just unable to sleep at night. Now I discover white noise. So even my ears are being poisoned. So my ear, my eye, my nose, my palate, my mouth, all of them are being fed poisoned stuff. Now, this is not just physical things. What I've been trying to say for the last 10 years is that this is not just about a physical issue of them. We need to carry these uh, as, 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 as epistemic, epistemic phenomena. That's epistemic manifestations of deeper problems that we have. If we cannot now live without no, no noise, it means a lot about our life. And this is the most innocuous of, of, of things. Imagine the food that, that we are eating. So the, the, what we eat is also what we, what we are what we eat, but also we are what we think. And what we are thinking also is pretty much has lots of chemicals on them. I will go and I, I say this always to my students, and this is very important for everybody to remember. I go to the farmer's market, supposedly organic. So I say, okay, these apples, how are they organic? Are they, are, are they free of, no, no, no. They are only have 35 chemicals. The other commercial ones have about 80. This is the, I'm eating apples that are organic and that have only 30 chemicals on them. That should actually alarm me, not about the apples, should alarm me intellectually, should alarm me that we are living in a world that needs to be re-examined. And this is precisely, the, this, this, this need for re-examining is precisely, at the end of the day, the summation of the, of the, of the, of the, of the work of people like, for example, Taha, Foucault, even can't, right? So wh what are we doing now? And this is the question that we should begin asking. And this is the question that should be where we would end our talk asking, because that is the question that should dominate our discussions. So I'm, uh, I'm, 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 these are my preliminary remarks. I'm happy to entertain any uh, questions. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Halak. Uh, wonderful, thank you for this uh, insightful presentation, uh, which I think brings to the core a lot of questions that also our research group and collective aims um, to, to discuss, especially those pertaining to the one is the boundaries of the very field of Islamic studies, right, and it's kind of intellectual tradition, uh, also the role and meaning of ethics within the discipline, uh, but also finally the very notion of critique when it comes to, as you call it, the, the nudded reason in contemporary scholarship on Islam and and Middle East as a whole. 
Um, if I may go ahead to ask the first question, it pertains to the notion of ethics and rationality. This is actually where you ended. Um, the notion of ethics and rationality in your book and in Taha's work more generally. Now, ethics appear to be a crucial concept in facilitating the, the so-called the management of the self, right? And we often use ethics or morality in the English language to refer to either external system or something opposite to it as an inward process, right? Whereas the idea of the moral self is very much linked to the Quranic metaphysics, as, as you stated before, and also as Taha alluded to. Uh, in Arabic, we use terms such as adab, akhlaq, and others. Now, in, in my opinion, just reading the book, um, Taha's work really sheds new light how to theorize ethics or ethical subjectivity within both traditional and more contemporary Islamic uh, scholarship. But the question still lingers the exact process of how this type of ethics is enacted is somewhat less clear, right? In, in relation to that, what conditions lead to the commencement of the so-called ethical time that it's also being discussed in, in, in Taha's work, um, which is supposedly or presumably a time that rejects the modern technology of progress. Mm -hmm. So in essence, given the, the entrenched presence then of, of modernity's economic, legal, and, and other predicaments, where does one locate ethical time, right? And how is it being enacted or how is it possible to be enacted in, in modernity? Well, well, I mean, of course, this is, this is, this is the challenge is, is how do you uh, transform uh, in peaceful ways um, our systems into uh, more conscientious systems uh, where we can be uh, more attentive to the uh, other lives on this planet. We are not the only animals here. We are not the only, you know, pe persons or beings that count. Uh, the the, 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 uh, the uh, statistics about almost between 80 to 110 species dying every day is, is, is alarming. Nobody even is talking about this. So, of course, we have many problems, but the, the, how do we, how do we usher in ethical time, uh, which is a complex uh, concept in itself, because when we speak about ethical time, uh, we are also talking about the exact op opposition of the theory of progress. Uh, theory of progress always looks uh, ahead, always is hopeful of a better future. It has been going around since the middle of the 19th century, always that we are heading to a better future, and everybody is asking, where is it? Uh, we, we have not seen it yet. Uh, we are working hard for it, even on an individual level. We will work all of our lives hard thinking that, oh, in retirement, we will do this and that. We, we slave for 65 years, and then after 65, we're supposed to begin to enjoy life. And then most people actually go into depression after 65, and when they retire, and they cannot actually, they're not getting anything. And they, many of them told me, uh, we regret retiring because it is much worse than working. Uh, and so, so no one is, 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 is reaching this uh, uh, in, in the beginning of the 20th century. We thought, oh, by the end of the century, they thought that things will be much better. We will fix many of the problems. Actually, all we are getting is, in fact, deeper and deeper in our problems. We are destroying more and more. Uh, we are now worrying about how our children are going to survive. And so this, the, the, this, this, um, this, this is something that needs to be brought out much more forcefully, forcefully by scholars, that the idea of progress, the theory of progress, I call it actually a theology of progress, because it's like a God amongst ourselves. Uh, people are, are, if you even begin to talk to non-academicians about this, they think that you are a lunatic. Then what are you talking about? It's like, again, it's like a heresy. And that's why I, 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 I better label it as, and that's, I, I use the term in uh, the expression in, the last book, it's a theology of progress. While in the, in, in, in the impossible state, a few years earlier, I called it the doctrine of progress or the, the idea of progress. It's not just an idea. It's not even a doctrine. It is a theology. Uh, ethical time is totally different. Ethical time, interestingly, and this is, it goes against every conception we have in modernity. Ethical time actually looks backward. Backward is not always backward. 
Backward doesn't always mean that, oh, because you know they, they lived in caves and, and they used primitive tools, they are backward, we are much better. That is not progress. The progress is in, for Taha, for many others, for me, progress is ethical progress. It's a progress that, 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 that doesn't, does, is not ashamed of saying, listen, we will, find, um, we will find any model. We don't care where it comes from. It could come from the distant past, distant future, could come from for Jupiter and, 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 and uh, Mercury, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it is an exemplary uh, ethical figure that we can, can, can contribute to the improvement and the purification of our life. And it needs lots of purification. We were just talking about the pollutants that that uh, that that we ha we live with every day, uh, and so ethical time um, ethical time is 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 a process. And this is where I think the 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 work of uh, people like Levinas, uh, uh, Benjamin, even uh, uh, but mostly um, like Pierre Adot and and Foucault and Taha is very important because it talks about the importance of the cultivation of the inner self, something that we have forgotten. We don't do that anymore now. We left our inner selves to be run by the state educational and, and other institutions. We have no attention whatsoever today for our inner beings. There was a whole history of humanity over 5,000 years, at least two and a half thousand at a minimum, and we can document this. Two and a half thousand years, a history of, in, in fact, working on, on the self, on the self inside. The, the, we, in as much as you clean your house every day, wash the dishes, put everything and make your bed and, and, and sh shine your shoes and wear nice clothing and uh, put, you know, buy uh, flowers, put them on the table, all of these taking care of your home has no, have no equivalent in terms of our, now our taking of the self, take care of the self is limited to therapy. It is either through yoga, which, or in even Sufi forms now, which are not absolutely nothing to do with the old forms of Sufism. They are therapeutic like yoga or some sort of uh, ayahuasca or, uh, or some sort of a drug, uh, God knows where they get the, the, the Piro or the Ecuador can provide. Uh, in order to in order to deal with our problem, but there is no systematic, no intentional, no uh, system of practice, or rather, I would say, praxis that centers in the way everybody attends to their home. Everybody should attend to their inner self. More importantly, this is the first terrain that we have we have in the world. Before we own our houses, we already owned ourselves from the inside. It takes us 30 years to buy a house, but we are born with the self from the inside. And therefore, the technologies of the self that, the, that, 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 the, the, that uh, people from Plato, Aristotle, to the Sophists or the, the Epicureans, all of these people had a technology of the self. If you look at, at the Indian traditions, the Hindus, Jains, all of the, 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 all the, the Muslims, Jews, everyone, for the longest, biggest traditions, religious traditions in the world, all had what I call a, 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 the a architecture of the self that was, 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 was studied, practiced, applied, and, and implemented in the self so as to create a certain harmony between your physical movements and your mental movement. So the physical and the mental have to correspond with each other in order to produce this kind of ethical subject. What we have today is a total segregation of the two. This is why uh, mental disease is on the increase because we have, lost, we have lost touch between our lives, our physical life and with our mental lives. These two are two comp compartmentalized in two places. Uh, the recent statistics about mental disease in the world are alarming, not to mention of course suicide. Uh, mental disease is not simply uh, something that, well, you know, it happens. No, it doesn't happen. It shouldn't happen. It, 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 it could happen once every blue moon for a very small segment of society. But to say, to say that actually about uh, one out of five people now suffers from mental disease around the world, that is a little too much. 
And notice one out of four, one out of five seems to be the magical number for many things. <clears throat> one out of five people uh, has a serious heart disease. One of five people has a serious cancer issue. One of five people has mental disease. One of five people, one of five, one of four. It is so, so dominant that, that, that we are not attending to the, or we deal with this with the bandage solution. We just simply create a therapy and th we think that therapy will solve, will, that's why it is very possible and very reasonable to call the liberal tradition a tradition of therapy because it, the liberal tradition never goes into the, into the roots of things to look for the real causes for what is causing these things because it will disturb the materialist order, i.e. capitalism and the forms of govern governance that protects capitalism. So this is a holy cow. This is the holy cow of liberalism. If we mean business, we need to begin to think seriously about who we are from the inside. How are we going to remake ourselves from the inside as subjects, as active, intentional subjects? Subjects that can look at, uh, uh, one can look at the inside of oneself and say, I have to, to build, to uh, um, enhance, to uh, nurture, to promote, and to solidify. The, the attention to the to the to the subjectivity is our prime prime should be our prime concern and interestingly enough and and problematically enough it is actually our last concern in fact it is not a concern at all nowadays uh, thank you uh, professor uh, Daya, would you like to go ahead please uh, yes um, well first of all thank you professor halak for this uh, a lively presentation and discussion it's good to see you again i'm happy that you're well um, in order to uh, leave uh, enough time for the others to, to uh, ask questions as well, the attendees, I will, um, I have two brief questions. I'll just put them together. Um, the first one is one of the things that you mentioned in your, um, I believe in the introduction to the book, um, and uh, something that I've also noticed in Taha's work generally, is mm -hmm. that um, there's a lot of looking back backwards, as you put it. Uh, but there's not so much nostalgia. Or let's say um, we don't find in it this, what you find very strong in Nahda works. You also talked about the Nahda literature, that is the reform project of the Islamic world, particularly in Egypt and in Syria, the Levant and Middle East, um, modeled after mostly European models of progress and so, et cetera. And you find in this literature, whether it's religious or secular, regardless of the orientation, a very strong nostalgia. And you find it also in, of course, in al -Jabri. You know, he's nostalgic uh, for the, the good old days of Ibn Rushd and the, and the Burhaniyin. So um, when we talk about, and, and you talked about ethical time a lot in your, in your work, and ethical time is something of the past, but now in your discussion, you seem to suggest that ethical time is something also we can bring about as an as time a, is not of the past uh, i i don't think yeah. either taha or i um, would say this uh, ethical time is ethical time precisely because it is timeless it's timeless uh, mm -hmm. it's timeless for example for example there, there's there's there are fundamental truths that one cannot really play with uh, you, you you for example uh, i would uh, totally find shocking for, for a moral philosophy now to debate the issue, what is, what, what is our obligation? Why are we, do we have an obligation towards the poor? I wouldn't even entertain this. This, this to me is, is, is intellectual poison. There are certain things that you don't debate. One of them is that, for example, the poor in society need to be addressed specifically as a category with compassion. Yeah. And, and so, for example, in, in, in speaking about the, um, and this is where ethical time, by the way, connects with the problem of the is and the ought and the fact and value distinctions, which have become, uh, are becoming actually more and more important in, in moral philosophy, happily, uh, is that when, when, when we now the claim, general claim, although there is lots of critique now, is that, you know, you cannot derive a, a, a ought from an is, you cannot, the morality is morality and fact is fact. Uh, well, I, I don't, uh, my answer when I first read it and started studying it something like 15, 17 years ago, I said, uh, even before I finished the first sentence, I said, these people don't know what they are talking about. I know the Quran, 
And in the Quran, there is no, there is no actually distinction. And when the Quran says al fuqara wal masakin, that in every fakir and every miskin in the Quran, meaning the poor and the way trodden, in every designation called fakir, poor, there is an, an no distinction whatsoever, uh, neither conceptual nor social nor epistemological nor anything, between between poverty and the, the, the imperative to help. Mm -hmm. When we say fakir, fakir implies precisely in the same way you say, well, the mother went to the market. Well, you are not saying anything about children here. In the proposition, the mother went to the market. Uh, obviously, the children are not there. But if you think about it a little second, one second, you realize that when I say the mother went to the market, in the sentence, there are children are, are, are um, entailed entailed not implied because in logic there is this distinction between entailment and implication it's they are entailed by the the term mother and with the same way in the in the quran when you have faqir the idea that you need to and the quran is clear about this towards the end which actually was one of the first surahs to be revealed in the shorter surahs at the end says that 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 the poor have a right against your wealth that's a legal injunction the poor have a right against your wealth. And so the, the fakir becomes the locus of, of course, a physical fact, fakir, simply, somebody who has not, no sufficient means to live, uh, and that they need help. But there is, there is no distinction between one and the other. I am, I am now in the 21st century, I am breaking it down in light or into two separate categories in light of, 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 of the debate is going on. But in, for Muslims for hundreds of years, they didn't make that distinction. And so ethical time is, 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 uh, is, is, a, a, is, is a, an, a, I would say an advocacy to restoring as sacred cow, the basic decency features of humanity to begin there. And then we can debate the rest. But there are things that you cannot debate. It's like in, until today, for example, it is a moral injunction, not just legal. And that's why it is found in every legal system. You just can't go and kill somebody. Life is dear. Why? Because you don't want to be killed yourself. So it becomes like a matter of existential matter. So we have uh, uh, um, legislated in all of our systems anywhere that you cannot kill somebody without a good cause, without a legal cause, let's say. Uh, the, the, there are moral truths like this too. And we, I think we should begin with these at least and work our way towards other things. But the, the idea here is that, uh, is, is that ethical time is the exact opposite of the theory of progress. And people don't make the, bring the two together, but if you think about them carefully, actually these two are antithetical and they have to be studied in light of each other. Uh, thank you, Professor. I have another question, and then we're going to go back to uh, Professor Daya, and then we're going to open up for the for the Q and A. Um, my my second question is somewhat broader, pertaining to Taha's work in relation to your own scholarly trajectory. Um, thinking of your latest works, which very much deal with the critique of modernity and ethics, especially the impossible state and restating Orientalism, and also obviously the book we're, we're currently discussing. How do you see your own intellectual projects within Islamic studies informing various areas from legal history to Sharia's moral law to Islamic ethics and philosophy. These are obviously closely connected discourses that permeated the very field of Islamic studies. Uh, if you can offer some reflections on your own intellectual peregrinations, perhaps. Well, you know, to be honest with you, when I started working in Islamic studies uh, 40 some years ago, I always thought uh, that I'm, I'm in a minor field, actually an insignificant field in many ways compared to, for example, you know, the bigger fields like history. If you look at the, the compare the Department of History and Department of, uh, of Islamic Studies in any university uh, or English literature for that matter or, or engineering or uh, Islamic Studies have, has always been, but uh, is very small. But in fact, I came to realize when I was thinking very hard about uh, about, about what has been disturbing me for years and years and years since actually 
pretty much since about 2000, I began to, uh, to be very uncomfortable with, 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 with the idea of Orientalism as has been cultivated by in the field. Uh, of course, due to Saeed's book, but also how we, how the field reacted to it, how the world reacted to the critique, and how, what it made 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 of of that critique in the way of cultivating the field. And the more I thought about it, the more I became disenchanted with the whole evolution. First, with the, not with the just Saeed's work, which is which was limited, but again, it was like forty years ago. We cannot blame the man for he was doing a wonderful job at the time. The, the problem is not with Saeed. Uh, if, if I were, if I, if I bring out the, the problematics in the Saeed book, it's not because I have any desire to deal with the book itself. What bothers me about Saeed's mistakes or problems is that the, 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 the scholars have, have, have not, uh, have not uh, been successful in dealing with his critique and carrying it further. Uh, we are still bogged down in the 1979 mentality of what Orientalism should and should not be. Uh, and so the the um, so suddenly thinking about all these issues, um, well, not so suddenly. I mean, suddenly in terms of what I have been doing like the twenty years before, now I'm beginning to say, okay, well, there is there is a big problem here. There is a much more pervasive problem than I ever thought, which is that first, Islamic studies is not really a minor field at all. It is minor field nu numerically, but in fact, in in terms of importance, in terms of of significance in terms of its heuristic pedagogical role in academia, it is one of the most important fields. Why? Because it is the bridge to the to bringing to taking us and bringing back to us things from the entire Islamic world, which is the most important world for actually the European, uh, for the Euro American, especially the European uh, history. There is there was no neighbor, no influence. No culture, no civilization, no history, no medicine, no anything that was more influential on Europe than Islam. Islam engulfed Europe, and Islam and, and Europe actually did not know much until the 19th century. Did not know much about anything except Islam. And so, so we are denying this fact now. We are in many ways putting putting Islam as uh, the, our external other. Well, uh, I, I beg to differ. We cannot do uh, the history of Europe without doing the history of Islam and vice versa. They are so entwined together. They, they have been together playing the same, in the same uh, uh, fate of things. They, they are to be always understood together in, in order for us to understand one better than we understand, uh, uh, understand it today. And so my work in this to answer now your question specifically, I am trying to basically say that we can learn from the field of Islamic studies by changing the way it is Islamic studies are done. The materials are there, empirically it, they are there, but we need to start doing work with this material and asking other questions where we can be a little more humble about addressing is Islamic things. We need to, uh, to adopt a little bit of what I call epistemological humility, or rather epistemic humility, where, where, where we are not sovereign authors asking, dictating the agenda of research in light of what, cons what, what, what only uh, um, pertains to us as the, 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 the beings that want to be, want to, to, to rise um, as, you know, this sovereign, powerful intellects. I think it behooves us to begin to think about that in, in different way, in, 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 in uh, asking questions such as, for example, what can we learn from the Islamic tradition? Did the, 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 when, 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 Levinas, uh, when Levinas wrote what he wrote, uh, well, maybe some people said it, but I'm not aware of it. Uh, people didn't think, oh, wh why would Levinas draw on the, on, the, on, the, on the Jewish biblical tradition? This is like, we, we don't want that. It doesn't belong to us. Nobody says this. It is, it is actually, all we say is, well, it is the Hellenic Jewish, uh, the, the Judaic tradition. It's part of our tradition. Where is Islam in all of this? Why isn't it part of our, uh, of our repertoire of the, in discussion? Uh, just because there are some terrorist groups who are terrifying us today, doesn't mean that we can, 
we have to throw the baby with the bathwater. There's a whole civilization of 1200 years. And I'm talking to you about this as somebody comes from a Christian background. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here to advocate any particular religious view or another. That is not my concern for any audience who thinks that I'm in, in, engaged in this business, let them forget it now. That is not the issue. The issue here is, is, is what I have found with my background, whether it is religious or non-religious, uh, over the la last 40 some years, in terms of the intellectual capital, uh, ethical capital, or whatever capital you care to, 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 uh, to think, that can actually provide us with some instruction. No one is above learning from somebody. We can learn even from people who are not even one tenth as educated as we are. Everybody has a lesson for us. Even babies can teach us things just by observing them. So why aren't we listening to everybody equally or at least giving some attention, fair, equitable attention to? And what I'm trying to say is I think we need to rehab. Islamic studies cannot be continued, cannot continue to work, to, to operate this way. It's a waste of time, to be honest with you. I'm putting it to you clearly now. It's a waste of time. It needs to be done in another way that attends to our interests and our welfare and um, well-being today. And we can learn in as much as we bring Buddhism and uh, Hinduism and yoga to our life, we can bring other things in order to, um, from Islam and elsewhere, I'm not advocating just Islam. I'm saying that we have to open the, 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 the entire terrain of what might be called the subaltern you know, world into, 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 a, uh, into a lesson. And as if you are going into a room with many people and basically saying, you know, I'm here to learn. But I'm not here. I shouldn't be coming as here. Listen, I'm coming here to tell you what truth is. What, what, how should we, do, we be doing this and that? This is what Orientalism has been doing. Orientalism has been preaching on the Muslim world, basically, for an, one and a half centuries. Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor Daya, do you agree if we can take uh, one question from the Q&A and then we, we get back to you? Is that okay? Yes, of course. Go yeah, ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Zahra Sabri, uh, hi Zahra. She's asking, do you think the current pandemic may be leading to any significant level of global soul searching when it comes to some of the current damaging prevalent intellectual and ecological systems? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I can see it uh, everywhere. Uh, I think I think we are made of, of obviously I don't need to, to to articulate this even but I'm just mentioning it as as so I can I can um, say more uh, that that our our um, our ways of, of thinking are always intimately tied to the physical and uh, environment that we that we, we we live in and the processes of life that we are in we, we put somebody thinking about the same subject, in even one year thinking about the same subject, he, he or she will never think about it in the same way he would think about it or she would think about it three years ago. Why? Because, because in three years ago, they were going through different circumstances. So of course, the, the pandemic as a basic fact, pandemic has, has, has affected uh, so much, even politically, I, I not only intellectually, definitely, but even politically, I can see how some people are just fed up with, 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 with so many things and say, okay, now there are lots of injustices being done here. And of course, the, the, the Black Matter movement is part of this too, because the, the pandemic created attention for, the, for Black lives. That's, that's how it worked historically in the last two years. And the Black Lives movement actually became much more robust in terms of other issues and racism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that, 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 that put the truth as a bundle. And that opened up an inquiry into other political causes, such as, for example, the Palestinian cause is way away from here, like thousands of miles. But in fact, it is, it is, it is one of the ripple effects of all of this. In terms of, uh, in terms of moral philosophy, oh yes, absolutely. Uh, I think people are beginning to make, and this is what I think is so urgent, and, and I have been urging for for so long, is that we need to create, always think about, the connection between the physical and the epistemological. Whatever happens to us in terms of, 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 of a disease or uh, environment or uh, what, whatever that we encounter on, on the difficulty we encounter in our lives in terms of uh, ecology, et cetera, and it has to be, or for that matter, by the way, the, I haven't mentioned 
uh, not only the, 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 the economic injustice in the world, but the more important fact to me with the, that is at the same level and reflective of the environment collapse is the social order. We, socially speaking, we have been atomized and individualized so much that we have no community whatsoever. All these virtual communities are precisely the kind of the bandage solutions for us to have something to, to float on. But we are sinking in the ocean in that sense. All we have is a little twig, twig that we are holding on to now uh, in the form of these virtual communities. Relationships are collapsing. People are, are un, don't believe in marriage anymore, much less in children. I hear one, uh, one, one young person or another every second day uh, between the age of 25 and 40 saying, we don't want children to bring children to this world for what? So, so many people are saying that this is, this is tragic. And so uh, the pandemic, of course, is creating, making people rethink, I noticed for the first time in a long time, rethink the connection between our physical facts and the, 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 uh, um, the, uh, the, what I might call the epistemological problems we are, because at the end of the day, it is our understanding, which is at the, at the issue here, in, which is the problem, is that we, no, knowledge is praxis in many ways, but our praxis is not the one that we need to be, because the, our praxis is, is part of the problem. We need to start rethinking how we how we, we we do things in this world. In other words, we need to rethink our thinking, and this is one of the re, one of the purposes of restating Orientalism. It wasn't about Saeed, really. I couldn't care that much about that that part of the of the of the situation. I'm interested in 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 in, in showing a certain progression of um, intellectual movements where 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 we still. At the end of it, we are still missing the most important parts of the puzzle. That we, uh, modern knowledge still suffers from serious, serious set of cancers and uh, heart diseases. Uh, Professor Daya. Yeah, uh, actually I have a question on this issue of knowledge as praxis. And, um, and earlier you spoke about the imperative of listening uh, and entertaining the the so-called other. One of the central um, topics of Taha Abdurrahman's work is, as you stated, is the centrality of uh, hiwar, debate and dialogue in all of his works. And he, he theorizes uh, hiwar, um, but he also practices it. And he shows us how it can be done. Um, his whole work is a form of dialogue, right? He, he enters into a dialogue with himself. Um, he, uh, he, it's not just a dialogue against others or a debate with others, but the whole work is formed as a, as a dialectic, you could say. Right. Um, but one of the things you mention or you discuss in your work is how, and you compare Al-Hiwar uh, with um, Habermas's um, uh, modality of communication or uh, rationality of uh, communication theory, sorry. Uh, but you, you make this contrast and you say that Taha's theory is actually um, um, a mechanism or a tool to, to form the subject, the ethical subject, whereas it Habermas falls short on, on this regard. Could you speak a little bit about this and maybe also related to what you just said about um, the, the global context we live in together and the importance of, of dialogue or the, for, for ethical communication? Well, well I, I, as I see it, the, these are two questions, one to do with, the, with, with Hiwar, with dialogue, and the other one to do with, um, with, um, the, uh, with reference to Habermas. Uh, um, the, the, I, think, I think what, uh, um, what Taha is trying to do is to respond to those kind of uh, what I described in a set of remarks about the, the differential between, between what we do and what we think, the disharmony between our acts and our thinking. Uh, we want something from life and we, we desire certain things, but actually what we do on a daily basis has nothing to do with, with, with these ideas. 
So we are always living in, 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 a, in a process of, of, of wanting something without it being achieved. This is, this is basically the summary. One of the definitions of progress is that, is that which, which you yearn for, but you will never get. Uh, and this is exactly proven by the history, as I said. For, for Taha, there is something that bothered him deeply about this bifurcation. In the in mostly in the liberal uh, in the liberal uh, uh, world, which is that there is a discrepancy, there is a gap between between deed and 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 um, and uh, and uh, uh, discourse. So that's why he comes up with this theory, uh, a fairly elaborate theory of hadarat qawl and hadarat amal and hadarat qawl, fa'l. Uh, hadarat, hadarat fi'l wa qawl. That's uh, not, not amal, but some, although it is amal, uh, hadarat fi'l wa qawl. Now, the, 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 the difference between them is, is, is that they don't uh, correspond in, 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 in uh, modernity, while he is calling for almost total correspondence, if not ideally total correspondence between the two. Uh, Habermas, is, uh, is, is, is talking about a, uh, a form of communication that is to Taha is somewhat apologetic. Uh, it, is, it, it is beautiful and looks very good on the outside, but that, does, that, that requires lots of actual preparation for it to succeed and, and actually be uh, meaningful. Uh, the, the, for, for Habermas, it is a discursive entity. It is about uh, discursive in the sense of discourse entity, not discursive in the sense of tradition discursive, in the sense that it is, it is, it is uh, ideas about how to create a communicative system. For uh, Taha, it is first, how do we create the subject that can engage in a meaningful hiwar? So in other words, there is something, we, lots of work need to be, needs to be done about the subject. The subject needs to be formed and formed in a particular way where I think uh, Taha thinks that Habermas is not willing to go. That would be too, too much of a shot for, for Habermas, too much to do or to risk to questioning such fundamental. Uh, I would think that if, he, if, if Habermas was held the, these ideas but belonged to the early Frankfurt School, I think he and Taha, uh, Taha would be talking to each other much more uh, meaningfully. And, and Taha would have less to critique in, in Habermas and Appel as well. You know, he critiqued Habermas and Appel usually together. Yeah. Uh, Professor Halak, are you okay if we take another one or two questions from the audience? Okay, one yeah. or two. Okay. Um, so Leila McGurk is asking, which tangible suggestions would you make to attend to our inner selves? And can we make this connection as we sit within quote unquote modernity? Obviously, in relation within or to Islam. Well, yeah, it is. It is. It is. It is the, the, these first, we need to know people. When I teach my classes, uh, and I'm teaching bright students, uh, when I tell them, "Do you know anything about the care of the self?" Usually, one student maximum raises his or her hands. Oh, yeah, I've read it in one course. We were assigned like a, you know something. Do you have an idea what it is? I uh, kind of roughly one's out of, of, of 20, 40 students. Uh, people don't know even what it is. This is the, when, when Foucault said that the technologies of the self have faded in modernity, I think he was very gentle, was very actually, was too mild about it. They, don't, they, don't, they have not faded. Faded is when you still can see something like a faded image of something that was prior. They did, did not fade, they disappeared almost totally. We have no technologies of the self, no care of the self whatsoever today. Uh, what, so what we need to do first is to understand, to bring back and simplify and propound a set of knowledge that actually describes the, the, the various modalities of self-care in, civil, in different civilizations. We, we, should, we, should inter, we should talk about how the Buddhists how the Hindus, how the Muslim Sufis, how the Muslim uh, Sharia Muslim people, all of these people had technologies of the self. And of course, we are talking about the Romans and the Greeks, and these people are, are, have 
uh, elaborated even within the Greek tradition, as Foucault alone could tell us, without need for anything. And Pierre Adot, of course, uh, how many schools existed there and many varieties of these. We need to study them and then start asking the question, how can these individually uh, help us or as groups living in co small communities, uh, such as, for example, as uh, clubs of affiliation, being with your friends and groups, working on this seriously like we do today, book reading. We, we, we have 10 people reading the same book and we come and discuss it. That is, that, is, that, is, that is the superficial form of the technologies of the cell. You can, with small groups, begin to cultivate what, is, what you need to, to, to uh, and at, pay, at, ask fundamental questions that cannot be separated from these technologies of the self. What does it mean to eat in a particular way? Why is fasting important for it? Not fasting to lose weight, not fasting to, <laughs> to, uh, to feel good about yourself in the sense of like how many people now without any spirituality, they're going to fasting. It's not only, not even to lose weight, it's about some uh, de detoxication, um, uh, detox methods, etc. That is, none of this is involved. What's really at stake here is that when we speak about food, our relationship to food, which is a significant part of our existence, this has to be articulated as a philosophy for everybody. They, everybody needs to understand what food means in the scheme of things and schemes of life. Food needs to become an intellectual category as well as a practical category. And where the practical practice and the intellectual aspect of the practice come together in the same mind. So we, when we eat, we, we, there is a meaning. First, there is a meaning to our eating and the, the, the act of eating, the very act of eating becomes a meaningful act. Not to mention that it is tied to everything from the, the meaning of life to something much more even kind of sensitive, which is how, the, how, how is my, how, how are my habits of eating related, for example, to capitalism and what capitalism is doing to me? How do I, how do I become aware of what capitalism, capitalism is the biggest, is, is behind everything in food production and we are eating it. We are literally eating it every day. So we are actually eating capitalism every day without knowing it. People don't think of it this way, but this is very serious. So we need to understand how our just manners of eating meaning manners, modes of eating, uh, uh, programs of eating, and what we eat and how we eat, uh, how it is tied to everything around us. The act of eating, the very process activity of eating should define all our spiritual and psychological and, and intellectual makeup. People don't make the connection. But, but it, in fact, if you don't know what you are eating, how you are eating, why you are eating, putting it in a meaningful context in your life as a cosmology even, then I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you are not reflecting on your life enough. And that comes with the price. And so, so the technologies of the self are, 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 are implicated in, in serious intellectual praxis related issues that need to be, if we, we need to, 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 this is a f field of knowledge. I will tell you, okay, let me put it to you in, 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 in a different way. I would say that we need a department in the university as big as history and engineering called, called care of the self the department where people go and study care of the self to propound it in the social order. This is how badly we need it. And actually we need it more than any other department in the university now. And anybody tells you anything else, let them go and rethink themselves first. So basically that there is a, a, an intricate connection between the, the very notion of ilm and as, as knowledge or science, even an amal as the- Absolutely, or, or not only connection, uh, Sami, it is not a connection. It is an organic whole. It, the, the, all we are doing is looking at, the, at, the, at this ball, let's say, from just one side. You cannot see the ball from the two sides at the same time. This is a logical impossibility. That's called the, the law of the excluded middle. But at the same time, you need to turn the ball all the time so you can see all of its sides. Mm. And so the amal and ilm, praxis and knowledge should be entwined together in one whole as an organic whole. Simply you are twisting the ball to see all its various sides, but it is the same one, the same ball. 
Thank you so very much, Professor Walhalak. We don't want to um, put everyone into the, the Zoom fatigue more, more than needed. So we appreciate your time. We appreciate your presentation. My pleasure. Um, it my, was my a pleasure having pleasure. you. I'm so and, happy to, uh, to see my old um, um, friends again and to uh, meet uh, my new ones. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we yeah. hope that in the near future, we will be able to welcome you in person in Oslo as well. I would love um, to do that. And you, you, you in New York as well. Inshallah. Uh, thank you, Professor Dai, as well, for being a wonderful panelist and yes. for your question. Thank you so much, uh, Islam and uh, Sami, and for, for all of your valuable questions. And, and I would like to thank, actually, our uh, audience with their questions. Brilliant questions. It, it, indeed, indeed. Thanks also to our audience and to MF Kasser for hosting us, especially to Dr. Leet and Dr. Yes, Brunsmith. Um, if you're interested in similar events in the near future, stay put for the second Critical Islamic Studies guest lecture in a few months' time. Uh, we're going to be in touch. So until then, take care and stay safe. Thank you Thank so you much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good luck. Bye.